Good morning and welcome to Broward Teen News. We're here at Cooper City High School to take a look at how the 2017-2018 school year has been going so far. Stay tuned to see a club that's making a change. How Cooper City citizens gave back to their community. And a student who is living his dream. Broward Teen News starts now. A major event that impacted the beginning of the school year was Hurricane Irma. And in the wake of it all, our community members stepped up to assist with the cleanup. Melissa got the story. In the wake of Hurricane Irma, one serene spot is already on the path to recovery. I can't even start to say how much has already been done. I want to say it's only been four days and we, this place is unrecognizable to what it was after Hurricane Irma. We have a lot of trees that are uprooted, um, they're huge, they, they fell out, it blocked off some of our pathways, um, it, it fell on one of our enclosures. It's been a lot, I mean you can just imagine like if you do have so much damage done um, by Hurricane Irma, uh, just what it would take to try, to try to get it back. However, the employees are not bearing the burden to clean up alone with volunteers participating in any way possible to rebuild Flamingo Gardens to its pre-Irma glory. It's really a community and very um, family-like. Pretty immediately, uh, we have had tons of volunteers come out. We've been moving debris. I mean, we've had volunteers moving some of the, these big, helping move some of these big trees that have like fallen. I am hauling trees, <laughs> mainly bamboo. I'm kind of focusing on the bamboo. Um, it's lighter and they're trying to get the cut into pieces and get that hauled out. Um, it makes a big difference right away because it's so long, but it's really light. I really feel like a need to get back to my community. Wait, hold on. Just the patience that the volunteers have had with just being here tons of hours. We've um, compiled like leaves. It's really been special. With volunteers working alongside staff members, Flamingo Gardens is being restored one leaf at a time. For CTV News, I'm Melissa Luque. It's really great that the members of our community are so willing to help each other out. And it all starts with our students. Let's see how one club is taking action to promote community involvement. <laughs> one small group of students with a similar background got together to form a new class with a big purpose. So LIL is Latinos in Action and it's a class of leadership that is going to give us many responsibilities like community service projects and also get involved with elementary and LIA has not only helped students with their social lives at school, but has also impacted their academic careers. The main goal is to be prepared for college. I wasn't a really good student. I came to school but I didn't do anything. So have the opportunity to be the president of LIL has given me um, to have the grades, get involved with school, um, get in, involved with many teachers. And so Latinos in Action are going to be partners with the ELL students to help them develop their language in every area that they need. In more languages than one, these students are taking action to better themselves as well as their community. For CTV News, this has been Ashton Boston. Clearly, our school has many diverse clubs and extracurriculars. But Latinos in Action is just one of the many groups at CCHS. Chris found another interesting club that's working to unite students. Rush Week provides a numerous amount of clubs, which can be a great way to get students here at CCHS involved. Uh, so my club is Model United Nations and its purpose is for uh, students to come together and discuss global issues and then also um, compete to find solutions. Along with helping the world, Model UN also provides students with important skills for life after high school. Um, public speaking is a huge thing that you can um, get from this club because it's something that like will always stay with you um, no matter where you go you'll always be able to give a presentation and always um, speak confidently to others um, also like the club uh, is looking really favorably on um, colleges like they, they really like it um, and aside from that it's just a very wholesome experience like you get to learn a lot about current events um, and it's, it really just like teaches you a lot about the world that you may not know. 
Model UN strives to solve global issues one country at a time. For CTV News, I'm Chris Will. All this talk about clubs makes me really want to get more involved. You're right, but students these days have so much on their plates because of school and homework. Luckily, there's help all around. Let's see how one business is helping kids achieve success. With the start of the school year, some students are spending extra time outside of school to achieve success. Well, on a regular day, I mainly go and start with introductory level kids. Basically, they're kids who are just trying to uh, learn the basics of words or numbers, depending on what they need me to help them with. By learning reading, math, and writing, students are not only improving their education, but also their confidence. I'm not so good in school, so when I get to school, I can, I can start, I can like get a head start on what I'm doing. I like finishing and getting most questions right. It feels really good being able to know that I can contribute to their success. Knowing that they improved, it really does feel good that I can be a part of that. With lessons reinforcing what they learn at school, students learn how to read the equation to success so they can write their future. From CTV News, I'm Gabby Carbone. It's really great that help is so readily available right in our community. That's true, but there are other ways of helping out the younger generation. Jenna got to see how a local dojo is working to do just that. This summer, John Y. Kung Fu Academy has come up with an innovative way to prepare kids for the upcoming school year. Today's class is about just, blue, just real simple bully preventative stuff. So I want them to understand about confidence, helping friends who are bullied, also verbal versus physical bullying because you don't want to punch someone in the face for just saying something about you. With the help from special guests from different youth organizations, kids learn how to interact with each other as well as how to stop bullying from happening. This plays a huge role in bullying. Um, a bully, in, a, in essence, is actually like more so a coward. They're going to look for the weakest link somebody can pick on because most bullies pick on people because either one, they're being picked on themselves, or two, to make themselves feel better. Not only was this an educational experience, but a great way for kids to meet new faces and kick off the school year right. For CTV News, I'm Jenna Knight. Reese, can you imagine living the life of a star, walking the red carpet, being on a real set? Well, I got to talk to a student who's doing that as we speak. Here's the story. Most people spend their whole lives reaching for their dreams. However, Cooper City's very own Jason Drucker turned his dream into a reality at the young age of 12. I first became interested in acting when my, uh, well, actually when I took my first acting lesson. Two, three. I didn't even know what my mom was thinking. She got me an agent, so I went for my first audition. I was so, so nervous, uh, and I guess my confidence really uh, helped because I booked it. With years of acting experience, Jason was given the opportunity to use his skills and play Greg Heffley in the iconic children's movie Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Getting to play Greg Heffley, first of all, was such an honor because he's such an iconic children's character. I've watched all the movies, I've read all the books, and I really got a great idea of, you know, what Greg was all about, uh, the way he thinks. And um, when I actually was there and I was put in his shoes and I was surrounded by the things that Greg would be surrounded by, it really helped. That, that helped. With all of his time on set, Jason still managed to take his schoolwork with him and balance out his education along with his acting life. Although being far away from his family for months is tough, Jason still looks at the bright side of coming back to his hometown where he saw his aspirations come to life. I just remember the first time I was leaving, I was in tears. Like I didn't know how I was going to survive three months away from my family. And uh, before I knew it, I was home with them again. At home, I'm Jason. My friends treat me like Jason. And uh, my family does too, and you know, that's why I'm really thankful. For CTV News, this has been Reese Abrahamoff. Wow, I didn't know that someone with so much talent was right here in Cooper City. That's true, but he isn't the only skilled student from here. The next story is a triple threat. They say that a sports team is similar to a family, but a few members of the swim team are taking this in a more literal sense. We got into swimming by, well, first we started playing baseball, and then we kind of got bored of it. So we went to our local JCC and we joined their swim team when we were very young. We just all loved the water, 
We love the sport. It's very competitive, and we all just try to have fun with it. From this experience, the triplets have grown in more ways than one. One, two, three, cowboy! We kind of just like pep each other up and like we just scream at each other and like cheer each other on. Everyone cheers for each other. Everyone's a big family. Oh! Oh! It's very fun. They motivate me a lot. They get me like all riled up before my races and they just like give me company at meets and stuff. As they continue their high school careers, the triplets are sure to achieve success in the future. What motivates me is them too, you know. They're just such great brothers and when they cheer me on it makes me feel great when I'm swimming. And yeah, whenever my family comes to the swim meets, they all cheer me on, they all cheer us on it. I have big goals in my life for swimming and I want to achieve those goals and by their motivation it helps a lot. For CTV News, I'm Casey Chapter. Wow, triplets and on a team together? They must be really close. Well, would you believe me if I told you that there's another set of triplets on campus? Alexa got the story. For some, the first day of school is the same as usual, but a few others are experiencing school in completely different environments. I was excited on my first day of school because it was a new country, new school, new people, and everything is different. And I was expecting the American dream, like you were watching on TV shows in Turkey. Okay, my first day in a school, like, I know it was not that much different. It's still a school. So I was just taking my classes, meeting some new people. Larius and, and me uh, were bonded all my life. I never <laughs> attached my sister that much. But among the many changes they've seen, the triplets still have something constant in their new home. Turkey doesn't care about sports that much. Here, opportunities are much more, and they care about sports much more. They were playing like eight years. I just started. I never did a team sport before. With these new surroundings, the Gerdikian triplets will continue to see their new opportunities. For CTV News, I'm Alexa Pachardo. Fallen trees, damaged homes, loss of power. Devastation to our community. The destruction left neighborhoods unrecognizable. But when we all come together, the community starts to look a little bit more like home. The diversity of our students has definitely not gone unnoticed. And sports teams are just the beginning of involvement. One student has shown leadership in a variety of ways. Jessica has the story. While most seniors would be flustered with applying to colleges, one CCHS student finds a way to balance being a full-time student, participate in extracurricular clubs and sports, and help others in the process. As well as me, also known as X. So I joined the Sound of Pride my freshman year as a mellophone player, and I've been in the program all four years that I've been in high school, and I became a section captain for the mellophone section my junior year. So as section captain, I'm in charge of organizing the people in my section, making sure that they know all their music, they're prepared for rehearsal, and that we're all ready for our competitions and football games. In addition to his hierarchy and band, Caleb takes the lead guiding his fellow peers in Key Club. So in Key Club, I serve as an international trustee, which means that I serve as a representative to Michigan, Pennsylvania, Jamaica, Australia, and New Caledonia. So what I do for them is I make sure that they're connected to Key Club International, I make sure that they're uh, part of our scholarships and award process, and I also serve on committees for international, meaning I help manage our $1.5 million endowment fund and make sure that all of the money is distributed fairly and equitably. Caleb continues to go the extra mile, involving himself in something special. 
Mathnasium, a tutoring center created to help kids get the extra help they need in math. But what you can do is... Mathnasium is a learning center that we service children from anywhere from kindergarten all the way up to high school. Caleb is our lead instructor. He plays a fantastic role here. He is quite a leader. He goes above and beyond at all times and is able to multitask more than a lot of other people could do naturally. Caleb Neal is a student that defines the meaning of leadership. He is able to be involved while holding numerous positions in and outside of school while keeping a straight A average. For CTV News, this has been Jessica Less reporting. It's no doubt that there are student leaders all over our campus. And they can be found everywhere. Let's see how our fashion club is also fostering guidance one stitch at a time. And we're going to get started on choosing, you know, designs and so forth. With a variety of clubs, one group of students yeah. is sewing their way to success. Fashion club, it, well, we call it the fashion design team. So our main goal uh, is to make, like, garments or outfits for the fashion show that we have in February. And along with that, we do other sewing projects for like personal sewing projects. And we also do service projects uh, such as dresses in Africa. However, with these successful projects, much more goes on behind the scenes. Square, and you're pull it down. So today, the members, they practice sewing by making a little pocket, which was a very simple project where they sewed all four sides of two squares and then it turns it inside out and just to get them used to sewing. I think the meeting went really well. The members learned everything they need, um, and at first they were confused, but as they continued working on it, they eventually got it, and I think now they're gonna have a better time when they start the project. With help from their officer, the tools to be successful are held right in the students' pockets. For CTV News, I'm Izzy Tachi. From hands-on fabrics to hands-on cameras, students have a wide variety of options for clubs. And our local middle school has recently had an update that has brought even more opportunity to students. Here's the story. Over the summer, Pioneer Middle School's television program, PMTV, renovated a brand new area for their studio. So the new studio is a lot nicer than the old one. Um, before we would have to actually record and then edit and everything like that. However, now it's basically like a live recording. Um, it was Ms. Ferrero's idea to actually get the new studio and Mr. Pichardo came and helped us set it up uh, and it's, we're really looking forward to starting to use it very soon. With this new upgrade, the students can now bring their right ideas to life on a typical day of class. So depending on the day, it's always different stuff that we're doing, either filming videos of the principal or walking around the school to try and make a video of like what students are doing at Pioneer. Right. Um, and it's really always fun. It could just be Fun Friday, where we do some days we do fun facts, some days we do the Peaky Planet. Yeah. You know, we're learning. You know, it, it's kind of a challenge because our, we have a daily deadline. 3.30 p.m., our announcements need to be on the internet so that the teachers can pull them up and play them the next day. And we actually had a meeting yesterday and we would like to do a Friday program where it's a little longer and we air our little news packages and our fun segments and stuff like that. But that's kind of the goal. If we reach it, awesome. If not, well, hey, we got closer, you know, because eventually I think that maybe that's what we can do. Here's what I have so far. Yeah, try to look at them. Pioneer Middle Television has high expectations for any future endeavors with such a passionate and dedicated mentor to guide them. Questions? Okay, please do announcements. Yeah. Miss Vera is definitely a great teacher. She motivates us, she inspires us to make great videos, and she also is more than just a teacher, she's a friend to everyone. Um, she's definitely one of the best teachers I can possibly say I've ever had. We can't wait to see Pioneer Middle compete at FSBA districts with us. Felipe Lopez, CTV News. That's a good cut scene. Thanks for tuning in to this Cooper City edition of Broward Teen News. I'm Reese. And I'm Isabella. Be sure to visit Broward Teen News online for more episodes and have a great week.